I wasn't a musician to the point where I could play a guitar or I could play a bass or a keyboard. The only way that I knew that I can even begin to have some sort of career in the music business, I had to create my own sound. My DJ background brings me into having a library of records. The greatest keyboards, the greatest guitarists, I have a collection of all their sounds. What can be done with them? I'm Hank Shockley, I'm a producer, I'm a sonic architect, I'm a sound designer. I kind of like got the musical upbringing from all around me. It was like just everywhere I go, there was always music. It wasn't until my cousin came back from Vietnam, he brought back some music that I've never even heard of before, and it was funk. That's the thing that kind of like said, you know what, I'm in this for life. So here I am at the age of six, collecting records. Back in those days, there wasn't no manual. There wasn't no preset, if you would. It was all trial and error, and you had to pretty much come up with your own style. The one thing about creating Public Enemy is that when you have a name like Public Enemy, you have to create something that's edgy with the political rap that Public Enemy was coming with. The sound had to dictate that, had to drive that. I want to create that revolution, if you would, so when you listen to it, it comes across like a movement and not just a group or a sound. Early Lindrum, 808 drum machine, DMX sounds, all those were pretty much stock sounds. And in order for us to have a sound that was totally different, we had to recreate the sounds of kicks and snares. And, and recreating them means that we had to reinvent what the sound of the kick and snare would be. At the time, we're doing electronic-based music in a world that's used to dealing with acoustic instruments. When you're listening to an R&B record, the, the main thing is to keep as much distortion out the record as possible. Now, in the metal genre, it's the idea is add as much distortion as you can possibly can. So now, taking those two and kind of like mashing them together, but at the same time, I wanted to prove that you didn't need guitars in order to come up with a rock and roll sound. I got introduced to Reason. Um, a friend of mine was producing and he used Reason. This guy said, all this stuff is in the box. When he showed me Reason, I was kind of like blown away because I said, well, this thing has the S900 in it. It was Dr. Rex. To me, I looked at that as the, S as the S900 because I use the S900 extensively for a long time, I got my hands on Reason. I didn't move from Dr. X. I just thought that the simplicity was crucial. Wow, he chops it up for you. And I saw this other thing and I said, it also has an 808 drum machine. And that was it. All the things that I was doing with Dr. X, it's become easier to do with Kong. Immediately when I first saw it, I was thinking, okay, inspired by the MPC, but it was a little bit more than that. You know, it had layers and it kept going deeper and deeper. I could put any sound that I want to put in there. I could take Rex files, I could put a synth in there. You don't need anything else to make a really great track. The fact that you have your own effects on each pad is a killer. You know, there's times when your snares are just not you love the sound, but it just doesn't have enough crack to it. I could put a noise generator on it, tighten it up and give it extra kink, and then compress that. Now you could take traditional stock sounds and create your own. And especially in today's climate where everybody is sample suing everybody for anything. Nowadays, instead of taking stuff from records, you can recreate those. I can take a guitar sound and I can make it sound like it was from the 60s. I can crush it and make it a snare sound. I can take any particular sound and make it anything I want. That's, to me, the game right now. From a creative standpoint, it's like, it's utterly amazing.
one thing that reason offers for me, I could turn off my brain for a minute and I can just listen.